This battery pack goes in a Samsung PowerBot vacuum cleaner. It's over three years old and will run for like 10 to 15 minutes and then stop and head back to recharge. And it really doesn't recharge for as long as it should. I'm pretty sure it's just the cells are wearing out. And because the price of a new pack is more than the vacuum is worth, it's rebuild time. As it seems with most battery packs, they just don't come apart easy. No screws that I could find. In spots, it seems to separate at the seam. I hope it's not glued together. The end with the wires seems to separate the easiest. And it looks just like plastic tabs with bumps on them pressed down into a plastic channel. So I'll just have to force apart the two halves without poking a screwdriver into my hand. This pack has six 18650 cells. It looks like some versions of this pack could have 12 cells. At least there is space for 12 cells and some missing parts on the control board. The cells are 2.2 amp hour with a maximum discharge current of 10 amps. The battery terminals are covered by a thin adhesive backed fish paper. At least it could be some kind of fish paper or maybe something like Nomex. Anyway, it looks like it can be pulled off intact and reused, so that I like. A pretty nice battery management board. It looks like it keeps track of each individual cell, which is good. Probably one reason it has lasted as long as it did. Good quality batteries and keeping them in balance. The cells are not discharged, which is not optimal for removing them. I'll just have to be very careful and make sure not to short them out when removing the tabs. The tabs have preformed projections that are welded to the cell terminals and they are welded quite good. So I'm not able to remove them without doing a lot of damage to the tabs. I'm going to see if I can mash them flat and reuse them, but it doesn't look likely. Two of the cells are just held in the holder by friction. One of them has a thermistor taped to it. And the four bottom cells are just held in place with double sided tape, so I'll have to just pry them out. I have decided that the tabs are just too messed up to reuse, so I'm going to cut off the damaged areas that attach to the battery terminals and solder on some 0.15 millimeter thick nickel strip to connect to the cells. Once the tabs are tinned, getting through the adhesive left on them is the only hard part about that. These new tabs will handle the close to 4 amps the vacuum uses just fine. I did spend a few extra bucks and went with the brand name Sanyo cells. These cells, made in Japan, and are 3.5 amp hour with a 10 amp maximum discharge current. So hopefully I will get close to an hour of runtime out of them. It's nice that the holder has the plus and negative stamped in it. Sure makes it easy to keep the cells in the right orientation. I'm just going to tape the four bottom cells in place with some Kapton tape and then trim the nickel strip to keep it from sticking out past the cell. And now, spot welding time. I'm using about 12 pounds of tip pressure and a weld energy of around 75 joules to the tip holders. I'm going to do two welds per terminal, so that will give me four weld spots for each connection. This is the most enjoyable part of the rebuild. I'm sure it would get old if I had to do it for hours on end, but for some reason it's just fun spot welding the tabs in place. I'm going to reuse the old fish paper. It's still sticky enough to hold in place. 
I'm not installing the cell pack with double sided tape. I don't plan on dropping it and I think that's the only thing it would help with. So it's just a matter of putting it back in the plastic case the right way and mashing the case back together. Even with my brutal disassembly of the case, it seems to stay together. Then put the pack back in the vacuum. Turn on the master switch and put it on the charger. Project done. Thank you for watching.